Welcome to another Draw With Don. Now today is a very special day because I'm going to draw a bird called a curlew. Now, as you know, I like owls, but I like all the birds. And the curlew, to me, is a very, very special bird. In winter time, when I'm out walking with my binoculars, passing estuaries or walking along the pier on the coast, I hear this plaintive call. It's kind of very melancholy and a bit sad. And it comes from this beautiful bird called the curlew. Now the curlew is a wader. It's the biggest wader in Europe. And it's so easy to identify because it has a very, very long bill. This the beak is called a bill. And it, it's curved downwards. And the reason is it likes to probe very deep in the mud for invertebrates and other creatures. Now invertebrates are creatures without a backbone. And the reason why I want to do it now is because on the 21st of April is International Curlew Day or World Curlew Day, whatever you prefer. But that's very important that we celebrate and realize this lovely bird is in danger of extinction. So it's in a, what's called a crisis period. We don't want anything to happen to this remarkable bird. So a lot of great work has been done to find out what's happening and how we can help. So in Ireland, the National Parks and Wildlife Service, they're doing great work to try and save this lovely bird, as long as Birdwatch Ireland and all the other wonderful groups. So, and also I'd like to thank all the volunteers who do great work out there. So we're gonna have a go at drawing the curlew. And by the way, this, this bird has a lovely, what we call, cultural link to Ireland. There's lots of great poems by people like William Butley Yeats included the curlew in this poem. And also the great Welsh poet, uh, Dylan Thomas, curlew, cry me down. All these wonderful poems. So songs, paintings, sculpture, all kinds of things. And it's all thanks to this wonderful bird that has inspired so much lovely creativity as well as poems and songs. So we start off uh, by drawing the head. The head, <laughs> I'm just doing this very quickly to give you an idea. It's more or less uh, an egg shape. And the thing about the curlew is that it, it is unmistakable. But there is another bird quite similar. It's called a wimbrel. It has a slightly different sound and it has markings on its head. But the curlew doesn't have any obvious markings. It has an overall sort of uh, light, sort of nice color with very dark markings. It's more of a, a kind of a yellow ochre color, if I may use the, the artistic expression. So I'm doing the egg shape and I'm doing these lines down like that. And just here, I'm gonna give another kind of egg shape like that. So a line down there and a line down there and they just connect up like that. And we just indicate roughly here where the eye would be and where the bill would be. And then over here, we, we'll indicate roughly where the wing would fold in, like that, and maybe a little bit of a tail there like that. So we can have a leg coming down like that, and this one is slightly uh, bent as if it's about to move. So you've roughly worked out the shape of the bird. And a lot of birds you can you can draw 
based on these egg shapes. And up here, I'm going to do one in flight again, small egg shape, slightly bigger egg shape here, the curve bill indicate the wings opening like that. And another interesting way of identifying the curlew, it's got a white V shape on its back. So that's another easy way to identify it. So, so we go over here now and I'll draw the curlew very roughly again, but this time uh, leaving off the, all these lines like that, just to give you an idea how it would work. And again, you can take your time doing something like this. Um, and you can also decide when you're drawing something like this, uh, whether you want to change the pose or anything like that. Now, the good thing about drawing is that if you're interested in wildlife, nature, and you see something and you're out, try and do a little sketch, bring your little wildlife notebook, write down uh, the location, the weather, it's always good to know, the time, the time you saw it, because birds uh, sometimes have their own particular patterns and they patrol areas certain times and that and write down the species that you saw and even if you don't know what it is try and uh, do a few quick doodles and say well i had a curved bill it was quite big for for a wader bigger than a turnstone or one of the other smaller waders and then you can build up a nice little image of the places that you visit and then if somebody's doing any research and they want to know have you ever seen any curlews? Say, oh yeah, well now, I saw them. You'd be able to give the date, the time, the location. It's great. And so you can build up a lovely wildlife notebook that way. Now, winter time, you can see a lot of curlews, if you're lucky. And that is because a lot of them come in from Great Britain to Ireland as well. So they move around in winter time, and that's that's where you usually hear that wonderful sound that they make. But I'm actually going to just change here. I'm not going to use this marker here. I'm just going to use a, a, a pencil this time. So you know how to draw it. But springtime, April, May is a good time to see curlews. Where would you see them? Well, they like to be up in peatland areas. Uh, they like to be on heather moorlands and they like to be near grassy areas because it's a good place to feed. Anyway, we start up at, up the top here again, doing a little curve like that and then the bill like that. Now the thing is, when we're back to walking and everything is calm again, if you're ever up in these areas where, and it's springtime, and you hope to see these birds, a lot of them, uh, if they are around, will will call, and uh, that'll let you know that they might have a nest nearby. And in springtime, their call is much more cheerful, bubbly sound, rather than the sort of melancholy sound in the winter time. But if you are walking around, do be careful because they nest on the ground. They, a bit of a scraping in the ground, really. It's not a, a great nest, <laughs> no offense. And they throw down a little bit of, you know, little bits of sort of grassy material, plant, just throw them around. Then they lay the eggs. And the female, of course, does all the sitting, incubating, looking after the the eggs but then the amazing thing is when they do hatch out guess what the young are ready to clear off you know normally you see birds in a nest some of them are blind some of them have no feathers on them 
and they look pretty helpless. But believe it or not, the curlews, once they hatch out, they're able to move. Now they can't actually fly, but they clear off immediately with the mum and dad, the parents, and uh, it's quite amazing. They're beautiful, absolutely beautiful to say. Now I'm just doing, and up here is my drawing of the curlew flying. And I've shown you how to do this. So now I'm just going to show you again. Now, in order to do something like this, take a little bit more time than, than what we have. But it's just to give you a flavour and an idea. And one of the things I like to do is have a little watercolour travel pack here. Small little one. And it's very handy for me anyway. And I know if you're interested in doing a bit of painting, drawing, colouring, the, oh, these are very handy. So just put a little bit of colour there. So this lovely buff colour. And uh, so what artists do is that they do rough sketches of something that they'd like to draw or see or whatever. And then they uh, they work it up and then they, they bring that home and from the rough sketches, they can work up the idea for their paintings. And sometimes the, uh, the very rough sketches can be very effective. You know. So you can see a lot of artists, uh, international artists, they do a little pencil drawing and years ago they rub out everything but not, after you know in recent times they leave in the pencil drawings and that so this one here is actually i just have it in sort of the mud you know and it's standing around like that and again just darken this bit up here now normally I'd be uh, using small little brushes as well, so. but I just, again, just want to give you an idea, a little flavour of, of the whole thing. And you don't need anything too fancy to make that notebook, as I said. Just have a little pencil, paper, and again, if you have a few colours, all the better. If you see something that you can't identify, do a quick sketch and write down anything that kind of catches your eye. Uh, I'd say the most obvious thing with the curly would be the bill, the beak. Uh, but if you, uh, if you see something else that looks like greeny, grey with a lovely crest and you didn't know what it was, Bring it home and realize, oh, I was looking at a lapwing. Uh, you know, it was, it was not too far off where, where the curly was. You know, little things like that. And you can build up a great uh, bit of knowledge about your local wildlife. So that's just to give you a very, very quick idea of how to draw the curlew. And I'm just going to finish off by putting the original one back up so you get a good look at it. So I really want to congratulate everybody who's involved in helping this remarkable bird. And if you're not into painting or anything like that, maybe you could write that poem. Uh, William Butley Aids would be very pleased. And Dylan Thomas and all these wonderful poems that brought so much joy and pleasure to us. And they were inspired by lovely nature and especially special creatures like this. So remember, the 21st of April is World Curlew Day. So have a little thought for that wonderful bird. Take care, till the next time, bye. And don't forget to like, subscribe and share. <coughs>